We are back in the Victorian high country. Victorian high country, back for a big trip, we're out here for eight or nine days, so good to be back here. Made the big drive here yesterday, from home, took us about 12 hours to get to camp. Yesterday we came in through Jindabyne, through past Mount Kosciuszko down to Tom Grogan, and then we camped on the other side of the river. Tom Grogan's kind of the gateway to the high country from the New South Wales side one of the main ways in. So you come in, you're still on the New South Wales side when you hit Tom Grogan, there's a heap of camping over there, that's all two wheel drive access. And then you go through the campground down, you hit the Murray River, and that's where it becomes four wheel drive. You gotta come across the river uh, through the water. We came across there on dark last night. The Murray River that you come across, the Murray River divides the border at Tom Grogan. You got New South Wales on one side, Victoria on the other side. The Murray River is actually, I was looking up the other day, it's the largest river in Australia, over two and a half thousand kilometres long, and it comes out in South Australia, so it's a massive river. And then once you get across the river, you got the three-way split. Well, actually, two-way split. So to your left is, is the Davies plane track, and that's the one we're doing today. I've never done it before, so I'm pretty excited about that. And then to the right is the Mount Pinabar and the Tom Grogan track. They they take a two-way split up there in a few k's. We did the Mount Pinabar track last year, which is an amazing track. Such great views up off the mountain range there. And then we did the Tom Grogan track the year before, and that's a pretty good track. Um, it's all pretty easy, it's just kind of a bush drive, nothing too special. We camped at the Buck Wong camping ground last night. Once you come across the river, we turn left onto the Davies Plain track and come up there maybe three or four k's and there's this nice grassy campground on the, on the creek there. We got myself and Malachi in my car in the Navara. We got my dad back in his MUX. And then we got Shad in his Toyota Land Cruiser 70 series. He's just with us for the first couple of nights. And then dad and I are on our own for about a week out here in the high country. The Davies Plains track is rated as double diamond or double black, one of the more difficult tracks. Shad did it only a couple of weeks ago and he said it's not too bad. Um, 
they give them these ratings but they're still a bit all over the place as to what they actually mean some they rate as double double diamond very difficult and it's not that hard and then others you, you know you need 35s and lockers it gives you a bit of an idea but it's still a bit confusing but we'll get into the Davies plane track now I think it's pretty cruisy for the first few k's and then we start climbing up I'll start filming once things start getting a bit more interesting it's just bush driving through the bush now on the dirt road The last two times I've been to this area, the Davies High Plain track had been closed due to a landslide, I'm pretty sure it was. This was the first year I was there and it was actually open, so I was super excited to do it. Dad and I were both running our tyres about that 16 PSI and Shad was running his at 20 in the front and 18 in the rear, I'm pretty sure it was. With these heavier vehicles, your land cruisers and patrols, you normally go that little bit higher just because of the weight those tyres have to hold up. It's all been pretty easy going so far. It's a good track, but nothing hard. The Davis Plain track starts off with just your standard bush driving. You're driving through the valley for a little bit, and then you do start to climb up the mountain range. But honestly, nothing really that hard in its current condition anyway. You know, these tracks do change over time, but at the moment, it's all pretty easy, and the hills aren't even really that steep. Definitely, if you did in the wet, some of the surfaces are clay, so you would struggle possibly a little bit in the wet. That's when things may get harder for you. Once you emerge out of the bush, that's when you start to cruise along the top of those mountain ranges, and you've got those spectacular views and those big open plains, and that's when the scenery just becomes beautiful. Once you get out the top area, it's only a K or two before you come to the Davies Plain hut. Inside the hut, car. Yeah. Maybe it's at home. Oh, Dad, remember? I think once when I was at a hut. Remember when you're recording and and you and I think I was five. And you did some sweeping. No, no, and I and I found like a broom. Hey, how's all the bottles up there, Kai? Did you drink all them? Yeah. Yeah. Can't help yourself. Made it up into the Davies Plain hut. The original Davies Plain hut was believed to have been built by a local cattleman John Gibson in 1892. The hut was destroyed by the fires of 1939 which ravaged the area. The hut was rebuilt in its, re in its present location by the Gibson family in 1979. Made it all the way up to the top, up to the Davies Plain hut. The track up, which is rated as a double black, very difficult track, was easy. <laughs> um, yeah, you had to use a little bit of low range, there was no problems at all. You get any standard four wheel drive up it without any dramas. And then once you, you're pretty much just up through the bush, a few hills, the hills aren't even steep, but you know, a few little hill climbs, and they're not that steep. Come at the top and then you open up into this plain too. It's just beautiful up here. And then we made it through to that Davies Plain hut that's not only about a K or so once it opens up. Heaps of nice campsites up here and then you got a little creek running just through the area as well. The weather out here today is absolutely perfect. Just, I know it's nice and cool, but it's not cool, but it's not too hot. It's probably low 20s. 
hardly any wind, not a cloud in the sky. Had that rain yesterday, all the tracks have been dampened down. Makes them so much better to drive, no dust. After you leave the hut, you continue to climb further up the mountain, right up to the top. Between Davy's Plain Hut and the top of the mountain, this was the only hill we came across where you actually had to pick your line a little bit, but it was still all relatively easy. Pretty sure you get any stock four wheel drive up there of low range. But keep in mind that sections like this can rapidly deteriorate once you got heaps of four wheel drives driving on them and those holes can get big quick. You drive along the top of the mountain range there and you got those amazing views and you got those big plain areas you drive through you start to descend down the other side I'd highly recommend the Davies Plain track for its awesome scenery and great driving. But if you're after some challenging four wheel driving, then you're not going to really find any of it out here. That ended up being an amazing drive over the top there, across those big, um, just across the top of that mountain range. The VMS said I was up to about 1,785 meters I think it was. So you're very high up at the top there and you got all those dead alpine trees across the ridge line, a couple of big open grassy areas. It was great drive, nothing hard, just a bit of low range stuff. Ended up being a fairly easy track. We're nearly at the end now. We've started dropping back down the other side and then we meet a T in a section up here and we're going to head on to Lime Creek track. I can't remember what it's called now. We've pulled up at this little creek here, Charlie's Creek camping area. It's just uh, down off the other side of Davies Plain. Davies Plains track is kind of coming to an end now. You know, about 20 minutes down off the top of the mountain there. Nice little camp spot here. We passed three other vehicles at the top there. Other than that, we haven't seen anyone. I'm just waiting for Dad and Chad to catch up now. We're going to stop here having a lunch. That's where we came in yesterday, down through Threadbow, hit Tom Grogan across the Murray River there. Here's your Victoria, New South Wales border. And then you got your three options of your Pinabar track, your Tom Grogan track, and then this is what we've done, the Davies Plain track, first time I've done it. So yeah, nothing too hard, but great views. Amazing drive, definitely worth doing. And we've followed it on the hut, and then you come around the tops up around here. We we'll start dropping back down the other side and this is where we're going to have a bit of lunch here at this Charlie Creek hut. Nice little camp spot here. And then from here we're going to make our way down onto this limestone creek track. What's your thoughts on the Davies Plain track, Kai? What was your favourite part of the track? Nice. <clears throat> the weather today is literally perfect. It's hardly any winds, a slight little breeze. Not a cloud in the sky and the temperature's perfect. Well, Kai thinks he's freezing, but I don't think it's freezing. It's just nice and warm and sunny. Well, 
While we're sitting there relaxing, having some lunch, we even spotted our first wild horses of the trip. They came wandering by our lunch spot there. After the Davies Plain track, we took a left onto McCarthy's track and that began the steep descent all the way down into the valley onto Limestone Creek track. After we came off Davies Plains track, we're now descending down McCarthy's track. Man, I'm buffed. <laughs> Really steep down here, but you get good views. Made it down McCarthy's track, nothing hard. It was just pretty steep. And now we're going to go on the Limestone Creek track, which is up that way. And then you got another road through there, the Poplars. It takes you down to the river or something, it's just a dead end. The majority of the Limestone Creek track is relatively easy. You go up and down a few little hills, there are some really tight switchbacks like this one here as you follow along the valley. But then later on in the track, there are a couple of hills that get challenging and one in particular that's just been torn up by vehicles. And there's some big holes there you gotta navigate through. Even though it had some rain the day before, it was already starting to get quite dry and dusty out here. making our way along this limestone creek track now. It's all been pretty cruisy so far, a couple little bits, but uh, this hill in front of us now is looking pretty rugged. Very dusty and loose, it's been torn up. It's got lots of holes up through it. We'll see how we go. I think we should be all right. It's a bit hectic. Still sweating from running the camera all the way up this hill. This is definitely the most challenging hill we've done today. We're trying to figure a line through those moments. My camera actually overheated at this point so I had to quickly grab my phone out to film dad coming up. This was definitely the most challenging hill on Limestone Creek track, end of the day. You really had to pick your line up the top there, navigate through those holes and use that little bit of momentum. Now Shad's Land Cruiser is twin locked front and rear on 33s 
and you can see what a massive difference it makes on this hill. He's just able to cruise up with those front and rear lockers in, not lose momentum, lift those wheels and keep on going forward. After we got up that hill, one final descent and we arrived down the Limestone Creek camping ground. We made it through that Limestone Creek track and then you come out at Limestone Creek camping area. It's a nice camping area, big paddock. Back there is one other group there. A nice big paddock, they've got a toilet, big open grassy areas on the creek. And then Shad said he knows these caves that, the, that you walk to from the camping ground. He's going to take us and show us these cool caves you can walk in. Oh my god, in there. Oh, I feel the cold air. Yeah, it's amazing. I know, it smells disgusting. Oh Just god. a bit of water here, and then you, once you're across this, it's just dirt. How are you going to go again through there, guy? I don't know actually, like the best day of my life. Need a hand with that camera or? What, to keep going up through there or? Yeah, and then we can stand up here. So these are just nature's caves. Yeah. Yeah. It's like being in, um, it's like going to Janolan Caves or something, but yeah, but no, no one telling you where to go and what Your to do. Your eyes literally look red. Static, what is there? Static tights and static mites. Yeah, what's your head on there, Malachi? The static tight is what hangs down, yeah, because it's hanging on tight. tight. Is that just the way I remember yeah, it? Yeah, I remember they right? told us that in the cave yeah. and they're mighty because they grow, yeah, grow up yeah. or whatever. We're going to get trapped. How cool is this car? Yeah. First cave I've been in the outer bush where you can proper get in it like this. Yeah. I've only, only been in caves like this at tourist ones. Yeah. <laughs> this cave is so amazing. It's freezing in here. But you just, there's all these tunnels you can keep going through. A little creek running through it. How's the roof here, Kai? Amazing. Yeah. Look at all these. Yeah. Well, some of the drops are... Yeah, it's getting cold in here. Yeah. Really? I'm not, I'm not cold. I'm not cold, but... So many like areas to explore in here. Here we remember where you're going, don't want to get lost, but it's not that big. It's only a few turns, you can't imagine you get lost. It's already about 20 past five, we're just gonna camp at this limestone creek campsite tonight. Good grassy open paddock here. And that's the end of our first day in the high country. What an epic day! Tomorrow, we take on the Inji Goodby track on the way to McKillop's Bridge. Nope.